All right, so what we're going to do here is um, we're going to modify our routine a little bit. And what we're going to do is um, we're going to change our ROT13 in a couple of ways. What we're going to do here is we're going to give it, in addition to a string, we're going to give it an amount or how much to offset. And so we'll come in here and we will then use the offset. And I guess I should say what we're doing, uh, I'm filming this right after the last one, so in my brain it's continuous, but you might be seeing this a week or two or who knows how long later. We're basically going to modify the rotate interactive routine that we wrote last time so that instead of, um, instead of basically um, just rotating it by um, 13, we can specify interactively how much to rotate it. So the first thing I did up here is we are um, rotating by our offset amount. Um, so that way, if I evaluate that routine, if I, if I just do it up here, if I say rot 13, it's not really rot 13, it's now just rot. Um, I guess we should just change it to rot. If I rot hello by 13, it evaluates, you see on the bottom, to URYYB. But if we just rotate it by 1, H becomes I, E becomes F, etc. So now we can use different amounts. Um, so here, in our rotated directive, we are going to rot this by 13. So we'll evaluate that with Control X, Control E, and we'll see that um, I hit the wrong key. I typed Control X, Control E. I meant Control C, Control S. The um, the key we bound this to. So what we're going to do is we're going to explore this interactive a little bit more. So I'm going to make another function here, and I'll call it FT for function test. And and what interactive can get. And I'm just going to bring up the help for interactive, control H, F, and then the help for it. And interactive can get what's known as an arg descriptor. And the arg descriptor can be a string, and these are the codes that you can give it. Uh, so, for example, one of the codes you can give it is you can give it a possibly non-existent file name by using F over here. Uh, so if I come up to here and I say, let's give it a parameter, let's call the parameter n, but I then give it this, um, this capital F, just like we have over here. And then for FT, I'm just going to then print out what my parameter n is. So now if I run this program, and I type escape x ft running the function. See what it does down there? It brings me into my chooser. And why not choose readme? And then it prints out, oh, this is under tilde gh learning ellipse code readme.org. So using that code specifies how you're going to interact with Emacs to get your parameters. Um, so there are other things you can do. Um, value of mark as a number. Um, I'll talk about that later. Um, number using the mini buffer. Um, so here I can use n. So I run that. I've evaluated it. So now if I do ft, it's now asking for a number. If I type 3443, three, that's what it got. Or if you see here, um, n using a prefix r. Um, and I'm just going to come down there. You'll see these, there these other ones as well. But the prefix arg is really the interesting one. So let's change this to capital N. And now if I run this, escape XFT, um, well, this still asks for, um, you know, it's basically saying if I don't give it a prefix arg, it's doing like N, so it's just waiting for it. But if I do give it a prefix arg, and what a prefix arg is when you call a function, if you first, you can give it a number. You can do this in two ways. So let's say I want to hit a key star. And that just runs the function. If I do HK, control HK rather, for a described function, star, it runs self insert command. Um, so if I give it an argument, and I can do this in two ways, I can try control U and then hit a key from 1 to 9. 
5, let's say, and then I do star, it's passing the parameter 5 into that insert command, and I'm getting 5 stars. Or I can do control U 9 U, and it's giving me 9 U. The other way I can do this is I can type in escape, and then I can give it a bigger number, like 50, and I get 50 stars. So the two ways of giving prefix arguments, one way is um, one way is with um, control U and then a single digit, and then the other way I can do it is with escape and then any number and then the function. And so that's close to what I want, but, but what I really want is, you know, that's this end. Um, the problem with that is if I do, I don't want it to fall back. Um, you know, I, I want it to work without a parameter. I want rot thir the rotate just to do rot 13 unless I specify a specific command. And so for that, we're going to do prefix r converted to number or prefix arg in raw form. So let's see how those two work. So prefix r converted to number. And then if I do escape xft with no parameters, notice I get a 1. But if I do control U7, escape XFT, it gives me the 7. It gives me the parameter. Or escape 1, escape XFT, it gives me the 1. Now, this is a little problem because I want to be able to rotate by 1, but I also want to be able to have no parameters. So P doesn't quite work. Let's try capital P. So now if we do escape XFT with no parameters, it gives me nil. That's promising. If I do escape 1, escape XFT, it gives me 1. Control U1, escape XFT, it gives me 1. That's what I'm going to want to use. So what we'll do here is we'll change this to get a parameter. And this parameter, we'll call it just N. And this will use the capital P. And what we'll do here with our let construct we'll say, let's create our offset. Well, our offset is either going to be 13 or it's going to be whatever the parameter actually is. Um, so basically, if n exists, if it's not nil, we're going to say that our offset is going to be n. But otherwise, our offset is going to be 13. So that gives us our offset. And now we can pass our offset into, into there. So let's run this, and let's try this out. So let's go hello, and I type in control C, control Z, and it does rot 13 exactly like before. If I do escape 13, and then I run it, it still works the same way. So if I don't give it a parameter, if I give it a parameter of 13, it works fine. But let's just try control U1, and pass that one parameter, and now it only works by offsetting by one. So that's how we use our, um, you know, that's, that's how we can use interactive more interestingly, and there are more options to it, but it also lets us now use that interactive for those, um, those parameters. So for an interactive function, we can pass in data in a meaningful way, and now our rotate interactive is a little bit more useful. So that's it for this time. Next video, we're going to look at the last piece of ROT13, um, which is going to be how do we do it so that we actually can do a range of text. All right, so that'll be next time. Bye-bye.